Suzanne, I want to ask you, um, I know Brown is really at the forefront of kind of the brain exercises, the brain games. I actually have a neuropsychologist in my office who trained at Brown, and you probably know each other, who evaluates patients before they're symptomatic, which is kind of what we're talking about, and then actually gives them exercises to do. Um, I've said many, many times, and I'm the daughter of a cardiologist, so I grew up hearing about heart health, but I think where we are today in terms of neurology and brain health and awareness is where cardiology was 20 years ago. And so we're, this is an incredibly exciting time, but talk a little bit about those uh, brain exercises and what we can all do to stave off cognitive decline. So I think if you think about the brain as kind of a muscle, use it or lose it, and there has to be some activities, and nobody knows whether it should be reading or puzzle drawing or crosswords, but each person's activity might be different and whatever entertains you to keep the brain functioning seems to help in the long run. And you know, there's some information about people who are more educated or continue to learn through life having what we call cognitive reserve. And this means that even though you may be in slight decline, you may be able to make up for those by exercising, oh, yeah. okay. um, by exercising your brain. All cognitive impairment is not Alzheimer's. And there are contributing factors that make your Alzheimer's worse. So for example, stroke or any kind of, uh, some people even think now anesthesia, you know, a general anesthesia can contribute to it. So I think you want to consider all of the potential cofactors, as we call, or additional things that can make the cognitive decline worse. So in a way, the exercise that we're encouraging to do, the physical exercise, is a preventive measure that can help your cardiovascular system, and that has to do with how you tolerate different um, hits, for example, loss of blood pressure. Some of the patients who have some mild degree of memory impairment, it's very hard for them to grasp a lot of things, what to do, what to eat, how to do that. So, so that really inspired us and the Cleveland Clinic to create this Brain Health Initiative, a Healthy Brains Initiative. So we have created a website, we have created an app, it's free, you can go on the website, it's called www.healthybrains.org. Oh. So what's so unique about, this, it's free by the way, what's so unique about this program is you can log onto the website, you can do your own free brain checkup. So that we have six pillars of brain health as everybody here has been talking about. So from being physically active, we call that game moving. So we have a long list of recommendation to eat smart. We know that, you know, mm -hmm. food for thought and you are what you eat. And at this meeting, I think you have heard a lot of experts talking about healthy eating, healthy food. And we know that what you put in your mouth and how much you eat, not only that's your body, your gut, is your brain as well. Mm -hmm. So, and also that being really connected socially. It's, I think that you're all here, you want to learn something new, you want to be socially engaged. That's another great way of maintaining your, great, uh, your brain house. Um, another pillar, fourth pillar, is being mentally engaged. We have already talked about mm -hmm. Something that I do want to mention is that the mood, the management of your mood, management of your stress, and management of your sleep all have a very, mm. very important role in your brain health.